What up guys, it's Chrome Week, all week, and I'm gonna paint this Chrome piece. Let's get cracking. All right guys, I can't believe we were able to bring this to you guys. It is a miracle from the graffiti gods right before the beginning of Chrome Week. Uh, we put an order in for Molotov probably sometime last April. It finally showed up today, right before when Chrome Week started. I mean, I honestly thought we weren't gonna be able to do this, but we are, we got it in here today, and I'm super pumped to bring it to you guys. Um, you like my little 40 right there? This is the Chrome Fantasy Pack. It is four cans of burner chrome, everyone's favorite burner chrome. We shouldn't even have this in the United States right now. That is how rare it is, but we got it in. We got two cans, two cans of burner black. Very good for tagging, I really enjoy these. Uh, we got a sticker pack, a hundred pack of the Art Primo black and silvers, a spring fever mop, a retractable scribe, and of course a filled press and go inside here as well too. Let me just uh, pull out the press and go. This little guy right here. These are a lot of fun. They are refillable. And of course, the Spring Fever does have the Chrome Week sticker on there right now. Special edition, of course. Now this is uh, $85 value for 49 bucks. 49 bucks. It's a killer deal for all this Chrome. And you know what? That's what we're gonna look at today. So let's check out the Chrome. And if we have some time, we'll play with the markers too. We are at the skate park here, so should be a lot of fun. And uh, I guess let's get cracking. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start outlining a piece real quick. I'm gonna use burner chrome, and the thing is, is, you know, these things really run, so we're probably only gonna use one can, if that, maybe a can and a half, if we're lucky, uh, to cover this wall. This is four panels of plywood. Uh, that is eight feet high by four feet wide, so that's four, eight, 16 feet of space right here that we're gonna fill. I don't know if we're gonna go top to bottom. You know, I got these short cubic legs, I'm not very tall. <laughs> but I make do. Uh, but we'll go pretty tall. We'll do a nice little floater straight letter uh, from a homeboy demo. And I'm going to start with a Lego cap. We're going to use a Lego cap on there right there. This is a very nice thin tip. Now this is a fat spring can. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity for you guys to see how it works with a thinner cap. And when we're doing our sketch, we might as well use a thin tip. So let's get cracking with that. So with the Lego cap, you can get about one to two finger widths if you flare it out. Now this is something I actually really want to help you guys out with because sometimes people get confused about cap widths. And um, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not doing the big fill right now, so I'll take this off. So there's something that people get confused about with cap widths. Like, well, let's say, oh, this cap is one finger or two fingers. The width of your spray is very much determined by how you spray the can. So if you're going slow, you get a soft, fat, wide spray. But if you go fast, you get a sharp, fine spray and I think that's something that sometimes people sometimes forget and you know obviously you guys don't because you're graffiti experts I mean, you teach me stuff all the time but you know for anyone who just happens to come across one of these videos that is something you really have to consider because a thin line it's all a matter of perspective you know what I mean your relative perspective to the surface I guess you could say see like that now you can do a fade like that so remember your distance your speed makes a big difference. So let's get painting here. All right, so that's gonna be the top of the D. It's gonna be the bottom of the D. They're fun. I can already tell it's too tall for my short legs. But that's okay. I will make this side a little bit taller. Now, as you can see, um, this is all just shapes, you know, that just kind of go together. You know what I mean? It's very easy once you break it down to their individual parts. I know you guys can do it because you're graffiti experts.
Good idea is to stand back and look at what you just did. I, I have a big problem with that. I get like stuck in the surface, you know what I mean? And uh, a lot of people, you know, it's very normal because you're used to painting between close surfaces, you know? But it's good to just kind of stand back and just kind of look at what you did. See the mess you made. Now, one thing I would say is these letters are very flowy, but this one's a little bit more angular. So I think I want to get rid of that angular bottom that I painted on that. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it like, uh, I don't know. Or you know what I could do is try to round this off like that. Maybe I'll round that off and uh, make this a little bit more round. I don't know. We'll see what that does. So let's go ahead and fill it in. I'm going to switch to the pink dot. We're going to switch to the pink dot because that puts out a lot more paint. And uh, I got my paint hands all over. You can see it's got a pink dot right there. Uh, also, another thing too is on the back there's a large there's a large stem slot that lets you know that it's a fat cap uh so it should be pretty fat let's see how it goes whoa look at that that's boom boom 10 hands wide now again like i said before it's all relative how you paint the closer and faster you get to the wall the slower and further away from the wall depends on the spray pattern so close far away you got that? I know you do. You're an expert. All right, so it looks like we got it all pinned in. I still got about, probably like about this much paint left in the can, by the way. Okay, so for that whole can, I got about that much left. And I did a huge swath of wall, so pretty cool. So let's uh, let's chop in our outline. I guess we're gonna use the burner black, since that's what the kit comes with. Uh, of course, it comes with a pink dot on it as well too. Uh, but to outline it, I'm going to use the Lego cap. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble. We just got this new warehouse and uh, I've been moving pallets around. I smushed my painting finger and my communication finger this morning on those pallets. So I'm having a little bit of trouble holding the can. So we'll muddle through this, uh, but forgive me on that. Uh, but I think I'll still make it happen. This looks a little flaccid, doesn't it? We need, a, we, need a... we need to make it more erect. <laughs> The only problem is I won't be able to reach it.
when in doubt, when in doubt, just make it bigger. That's my, if you're unsure, if you're unsure, just make it more chunky. You know what I mean? That's, that's all you gotta do. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start doing our outline. Uh, again, this is burner black over burner chrome. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and uh, chop in your outline. You know, if things don't line up properly the way you like it, uh, don't sweat it too much. You know, you got a built in eraser in the can. I say that all the time, but it's totally true. Uh, you can always go right back over something you didn't like. So don't sweat it. I'm getting my stretches in, right? Yeah. Like that. You should always paint on your tippy toes. Always reach as far as you can go. Bigger is better in this world. Sometimes I confuse myself. Uh, okay, that's that way, right there. And that's good. Okay, so I think we got the basic sketch down. I think I'm gonna put an arrow here too. Uh, take a look at everything here. Maybe this could have been a little bit sharper through here. I'm beginning to think this is a little bit too fat. Maybe like that. The cool thing is I'm just going to drop my 3D down like this. So once I put my 3D in, it's all going to be gone anyways. So just if you feel like you need to sharpen it up, like don't even sweat it, just do it. Uh, also this, I think this needs to be a little bit fatter, like, more like here. You know what I mean? So we'll look at that in a second too, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and drop our 3D down. So we're just going to down up the 3D. Like and I'm going to do about the, the height of the can, okay? Like that. Like that. So from here to here, that's my 3D. Like that. There we go. There we go. Like that. Again, height of the can. Right there. Height of the can. Right there. Height of the can. Right there. Okay, this is a very easy way to do 3D. Height of the can right there. Height of the can right there. Watch this. Height of the can right here. Now, I don't do this when I paint, but I'm just trying to show you guys a way that you can make it work for you, you know? This is why you're learning. If all things are equal, you should all go together really well. Alright, so that 3D is going to go right there. That 3D is going to go 
Bump right there. And then, and then. That's already taken up. This is going to start about right here, just like that. Uh, you start over here, and the height of the can about right there. That's going to go like this. Then it's going to go boom. Boom, boom, boom. Like that. Okay. Okay. Oh, my finger. We'll make it work. That. You know, again, you don't have to do this. It's just a way for people to learn how to make it work. And I think it's pretty, uh, pretty simple method that a lot of people can use. And it goes there. And it goes there. Here. Now on these curves, you'll just have to plot it. You know what I mean? You just have to plot a few along the curve to make it work for you. Like that. Okay. Like that. Now that one's a little bit off, but it's okay. We'll make it work when we do the outer outer. It's no sweat. Pretty much got it. Uh, we got to do something over here. doing i should get the pink dot that's what i should be doing all right guys i'm going to switch to the pink dot to fill it in as you can see it's already dirty so you can't see the dot in there but there's supposed to be a pink dot right there in the middle um i'm going to carry the lego cap with me while i do it because i may switch out between the caps as i go in case i run into a tight corner or something like that so for these large areas great for that now the pink dot is really a soft cap um I've had some people talk about how they think it sprays too soft with this can, in particular the Burner Black. I think the reason why it was paired with this can is because it makes really nice flares. And you want a softer cap to make those kind of flares. If you want something a little bit more hard hitting, um, I would say maybe like a yellow fat. That one comes, it, it comes out fatter, but it comes out with a greater volume of paint. So if you need that extra thick coat, try yellow fat on one of these. goes right over it, man. Let me stop. All right. Okay. 
You notice how I'm just barely pushing the cap? You can get a lot of control, even with the pink dot, if you just barely push the cap. You see that? It's like nothing. Or you can just go balls to the wall and just coat it. You know? yeah. That's why I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. We'll cut that back. This kid's about to be dusted. I think they got another one in here. You know, that's the beauty of chrome. Chrome will cover more than anything. The black does really good. We got a lot of acreage out of it, you know. Probably like two full boards of that plywood worth, but uh, there's just nothing better than the chrome. The chrome just covers like nothing else. And that's why I always recommend chrome for pieces, uh, because you can rock a piece of chrome and you still have a little bit left over for a throw up or whatever, or even another piece. And like this, I'm actually going to accent it with some colors and show you that you can rock chrome. That you can rock chrome and still look. <laughs> you can rock chrome and still paint a dope piece. You know. I'm gonna cut back a couple chromey spots. Mr. I don't do cutbacks. All right, I need to get I need to get something to reach up there with. So let me see if I can find something kicking around here, like a five-gallon bucket or something. Oh, maybe this will work. I 
All right, so I got this uh, I got this golden yellow from Molotov. It doesn't come with the kit, uh, but I think just to make the wall a little bit more complete, we should put an outer outer on it. Uh, but one thing I think I do want to do is just because these letters are so thick, maybe I'll thicken up these two. So we'll do the outer outer first, and then we'll, we'll add a little bit of thickener to those as well. So let's go ahead and get cracking with that. But I think uh, I think this will hit really nice off of those reds in the background. So we'll hit that. Now, for those who don't know, uh, golden yellow is like a, it's like a Lakers yellow. You know what I mean? So if you think of like LA Lakers, RIP Kobe. Um, it's like that very nice, vibrant golden yellow, as the name implies. Lakers, school bus yellow, you get, you get the picture. Um, it's, it's kind of on the verge of one of those like pale yellows that have a lot of white in them that coat very well, but it's not quite on that level. It's still a little bit more vibrant. And that's why I really like it because it's a balance of the vibrancy of like a zinc yellow but has a little bit more coverage, like for example, like cashmere yellow does. But cashmere is very pale. This, not so much, it blings. Put a bubble right there. I really like this golden yellow, man, because it's like, it's got the right thickness, but it's soft enough that you can get that nice kind of deaf spray with it. It works really good for this kind of stuff, especially outer outers. You know, I, had, I was talking to someone one day like, oh, what's your favorite outer outer color? And like, well, it depends on what I'm doing. And it's like, I get that too, you know? Uh, but there are some colors that just really hit for the outer outers, like Tele Magenta, Golden Yellow, uh, Shock Blue, uh, Kiwi. Kiwi's really good for that. You know, I mean, they work in a lot of circumstances, you know? Not, not just for this or that, you know, just in general. So I always try to keep some of this on deck. pretty good considering my legs are broken. <laughs> Picking up this bottom, just to give it a little bit more depth. This isn't something you have to do, but wherever you have like an overlap, even though the 3D is going down, just kind of thicken it up a little bit. It just gives it a little bit more depth. Just kind of thicken up those lines on the overlaps. And then right here, 
could actually put a little mini 3D since the 3D is going down that way. Like that. Just thicken them up. All right, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, let's let's drop some shines on it. And call it a video. All right, so we're gonna do our shines with flame blue, white, flame blue white. Now this is an acrylic spray paint, so there is gonna be a little resin that comes out at first. So make sure you test it like this. You notice how the spray change is a little bit finer, or I'm sorry, it was a little bit thinner than it turned into a fine mist like that. So make sure you shake it really well, test your spray. It does come stock with the blue dot. Uh, but what are we gonna use here? I wish I had some New York fat caps. That would be a lot of fun, but I think we'll just use the Legos. We'll try that out. So I'm just going to thicken these parts up just a little bit, just to give them a little bit more depth. Next time I'm bringing a ladder. All right, guys, we're all done. I feel really good about it. We got some chrome up on the wall. Uh, we got a little bit of colorful accents as well, too, to kind of give it a little bit of spice. Uh, I gotta say, I really enjoy using this burner chrome. I've used it in so many different videos. You guys have seen it. I think that was our first video we ever did was a burner chrome video, but I love this stuff, man. And I'm really happy to bring it to you guys this year for Chrome Week. It's a killer deal. Uh, I used a, about three quarters of a can of chrome in about a can and a quarter of the burner black to paint this in one can of that yellow. And that was it. And I had this big ass piece that we just did. Uh, we got enough in here, you could probably rock like maybe three or four more on the same wall. So if you got this kit, you could bring out two of your buds. Uh, you guys can paint a whole big chrome production with this kit all together. Pull your money, 49 bucks. It's really not a lot for three dudes. Uh, if you get to 75 bucks, you get the free shipping, which is a killer deal. I mean, you can't beat that free shipping to your door. Uh, so whatever it is on the site is your price right there. So get two packs, you get one, your buddy gets one. All of a sudden you got a six crew member, big burner, chrome, uh, dub madness in your hometown, which would make me really happy. So anyways, uh, the kit's there. Also, don't forget it comes with those markers. It comes with a scribe. It comes with a drip mop so you guys can go catch tags later, which I feel like we probably should have done this video, but we'll do another drip mop video again too because I love making videos. I love bringing them to you guys. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you to the Graffiti Gods for making this happen. And thank you to our Primo, Molotov, and everyone else in you know that's just giving us support and everything like that. Thank you, and uh, shout out to the Island Boys. Peace.